So hi, and welcome to um, 2024 and our first podcast of the year. And I'm so excited about um, our guest this day and uh, topic because 48% of the people who made resolutions this year made the resolution to uh, get more exercise. I love that. Yeah, 48. And then I think it was 31% said they were going to eat better. Ties right into our wheelhouse, right? Yeah, that's perfect. Right? And Laurel Decker is my guest today, and she's also one of the co-collaborators on Good Fat Life and a writer. And she wrote this beautiful article on, you, it's solved by walking, it is solved by walking. Yeah, it's a phrase from, a, I believe, a saint. saint uh, I can't remember his name. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, he said, Salvatore Ambulando. And so whenever I have something kind of complex to work through, I think, well, I'll just go for a walk. It means that it is solved by walking. It is solved by walking. But what a beautiful um, idea. Yeah. Right? Because who doesn't have things that we need to work through and solve through? And by walking, we're taking off all of these boxes. Right. It's so simple. And it's almost so simple that we think we need something more complicated because we're solving something. It's a puzzle. It's something that we need to, you know, work at. And I just love that it's that simplicity of just moving and allowing answers to come and not getting too complicated about it. And we've been walking since we were really tiny. One of the first things we accomplished. So uh, it's so natural and it just feels good and it gets exercise and fresh air. Well, and there's so many things that you can, um, I don't know, correlations or that you can make by walking. I mean, just like to your point, learning to walk, mm. right, is such a big event in our lives. Right. And look at how many times we fall down. Right. Before we yes. actually, <laughs> right, before we actually take those yeah. first wobbly steps, we fall down a gazillion times. And we're not judging ourselves, saying, oh, you stupid idiot, you fell down. And nobody around us is saying that to us. Everybody's just like, oh, my gosh, oh, my gosh. Yeah, There's yeah. such encouragement and excitement. Yeah, I love the word excitement for it, too, because that's what I think of when I, you know, saw all my kids take their first steps and they see us excited and we see them excited and then they fall down. They're just that much more motivated to try again. And they just do it until their muscles wear out. and it's such a good feeling that they just want it again and again. And again, and there's just so much research um, about the benefit of moving. Yeah. And you don't have to move more than walking. Right. That's right? another thing I love about it too is I do love exercise. So you say, you know, 48% of people are making their New Year's resolution to exercise more. And we forget that that doesn't have to be contraptions at the gym or learning a new thing like yoga or, you know, kickboxing or anything like that. Movement is exercise. And yeah, the simplicity of walking is, I don't know why it was so profound for me to go back to that and go like, oh yeah, I don't have to go to the gym. I don't have to take a yoga class. And yeah, I can still feel like I accomplished that movement. It does the same thing. Right. Know? So what, um, so you used to be a runner. And, um, and thought that what walking was for wimps. <laughs> I think when I was a runner, I just had a, a younger body and I had a shorter amount of time. So I used to use it a lot to get back in shape after having my kids. And each time it was kind of like, okay, now they're napping. I can get a run in. And it was just so I had such a condensed schedule and um, you know, and if they woke up, then I'd, I could start again later and jump back on the treadmill later. But, you know, and I had mentioned in the article that with age, I started running even more, you know, kind of doing half marathons and 5Ks. I never did do the marathon thing um, because I always felt like that was going to be a lot of um, time and impact on you know, my joints and muscles, and I could get through a half marathon. And that was, that was great. It was a, a stretch, but it was good. And after a certain time, I just started feeling like my recovery time was longer. Um, I would have, you know, joint pain and my muscles would hurt more. And it would take a little bit longer to get into the swing of the run. And I, and I started kind of 
looking at my running shoes and I was like kind of dreading the run and just like, because there's a certain zone where you love it again, where you get into it maybe a mile in and you love the run. But I wanted to kind of play with whether walking would kind of give me the same thing. And it kind of also fell into my life too, because a friend of mine walked a lot. And so we would go on these, it's easier to talk, you know, so we'd go on these Mm -hmm. walks together. And I, I noticed, okay, if we go a fairly long distance, we're socializing, getting our movement in and I don't hurt as much afterwards. So it was kind of like, oh, I could play with this in my runs, even when I'm by myself. And see yeah. what, so you're making, you're reminding me of um, one of my best friends since I was 12. I was mm-hmm. talking to her this week and we did a marathon. We just, we were like 20 mm-hmm. and I don't know what got into us, we, but this thing popped up and we go, oh, okay, well, we'll just go walk the marathon. And we did. Yeah. I mean, it was like, we were tired at the end of the day, but, yeah. but we did it and didn't even give it too much of a thought. And um, she was always a runner and she's lamenting. I was saying that, you know, I'm going to start marathon walking again, but half marathon. And uh, she said, I can't, she, she's having such a hard time. She needs to get knee replacements Okay. And because she said, because I just pounded my knees out yeah. with running. I didn't realize the, you know, the long-term damage that I was right. doing. And um, so anyways, I just laugh. <laughs> I mean, not in a bad, not, a, you know what I mean? Yeah. But it's like, you just don't know when you're younger and what could be some of the long-term ramifications and walking is just such a gift. Yeah, I agree. And it does speak to that whole, we have a culture which is like bigger, better, faster, stronger, you know, all of that. And sure, when you're younger, you can do it but we forget the ramifications later on. Right. Um, I think I was fortunate to sense that I didn't want to have any kind of damage that was going to keep me from running because I loved running. So I thought if I get one injury, you know, then you get laid up and it it does make your body pretty vulnerable to injury. And that's not to like, you know, rag on running because I still run and I love running. I just have softened my approach to it and to now incorporate walking and to not think to myself, oh, I'm trying to get a, you know, PR or, you know, my splits are longer now because I added walking. And I just don't worry. I actually don't even look at any That's of my times anymore. anymore, sometimes distance. But mostly it's about the experience. And I walk more because I, I need it. I need to get out and I need to move. I need to connect with nature and my body. Get the air. It's one of the things um, we started doing is, you know, I'm really working on just understanding my blood sugar and how it all works. But one of the things, just little things you can do is after eating a meal, walk for 10 minutes. Mm. And Mm. I started doing that and, you know, like rain or shine. And um, part of it is if you talk about that there is no bad weather, there's just bad clothing, (laughs) right? Yeah. So 10 minutes is not that long. And it really does, there's something kind of magic about that. Just, okay, I ate lunch. I'm going to take a little 10 minute walk. Yeah. And, and like you said, and just be outside, breathe the air. And, and it's only 10 minutes. It makes it doable. Right. Well, we have such packed schedules sometimes. And I think that's the other way of looking at walking is some people say, oh, just, it's so much time and, you know, little payoff. And so I think to myself, well, if I don't even have 10 minutes to move, you know, if I don't even have 10 minutes in my schedule, then there's something, there's a different part of this picture that needs to be moved around. It's not, you know, do a heavier exercise. It's maybe create a little bit more space. Maybe. And like my husband says, well, who makes your schedule, right? Right. (laughs) And you kind of go busted. So the, um, and our, you know, our chiropractor, Dr. Adam Rushford, he, he did an article from this upcoming issue, which is coming out today, which we're so excited about, right? Um, about that, the, the magic pill, I mean, really walking, moving is a magic pill and, and we have it with us 24 seven and it's free and it's always there. And so many times we just ignore it. I think it is because it's so simple. Going back to that, we think it has to be complicated if we're exercising, but we forget that it's the perfect 
amount of, you know, weight on our bone structure, we're not compounding anything. We're, it's just the movement has, it's the most natural thing for our bodies to do. So, yeah, I think that's interesting that we, we do have the ma- magic pill and it's free and we're just kind of like, oh, that's too easy. It's too just easy, too right? Easy. The, um, uh, when we had dogs, we have grandkids now, so we, our, our dogs passed and we didn't get new ones because our grandkids, um, f- are, live in, you know, Montreal and Texas. So, uh, we couldn't take the dogs with us. Mm-hmm. And, but when we had the dogs, we got out twice a day for a walk because you had to. Right. Yeah. And, and it was just interesting about that the other day. It's like, well, when we had the dogs, we found the time right. because you had this, right. this being in your face. It was like, I need to go out. Yeah. And so I'm like, what changed? And it's just the fact that there's not a dog there. And you break it down to how natural these animals are and they know what they need. And so they start getting cagey and agitated and they need their walk. And that's actually kind of how I feel sometimes when I haven't moved enough is I get a little bit agitated and and so yeah maybe it is it just kind of goes back to how we're all just animals (laughs) (laughs) well and I know I know I am a different person when I and I like myself better yeah when I get that movement in and we make it complicated and animals make it simple they do okay now I feel like I need to move (laughs) Like, (laughs) take me out now, (laughs) right? So one of the things is that in your article you you talk about um, is like social walking. And um, so talk a little bit about that. What was the research you found on that? So that I found really interesting. There was research done in 2014 with the University of Michigan and some other um, universities whoever they they coordinated with I forget who they were they actually were several but of course we know U of M um but they found the benefit of social walking and how it helped us just to be in a better mood and to relieve our stress and uh it's all connected with being outside though so you add in the component of you know fresh air and whether you're by the water or you're in the middle of the woods we all know that those are things that speak to our bodies and make our bodies feel better. So um, just I incorporate that into my walking. And so I was really excited to see that research had been, been done to show that 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 is just not why I love it so it, much. It, it's just not in our it's imagination. Science into it. Yeah, there's yeah. a science there. So and talk about some of the things about your um walk in the woods with the older lady. That was such an interesting story. Was texting you not, it was maybe a couple of weeks ago. Yeah. <laughs> and I sent this, the picture to my daughter. I sent it to my friends. I, I just said, this is a whole vibe. I love this because I went onto the trail and there was this older lady and she was a little bit bent over clearly in her eighties or maybe even nineties. I would, I would say. And she would start running and then she would slow down. She'd walk and then she'd run again. And she was dressed in like these bright colored clothes and um, this kind of interesting hat. And she had a little bag with her and sometimes she'd see trash on the side of the road and, or the side of the trail and she'd put, put it in the trash bag. And anyone who knows me knows that's one of my favorite things to do in the seasons when we can kind of start to it's warm enough to go outside and um, see the trash that's out there. And, you know, I'll take a bag with me. I always have bags and gloves, um, rubber gloves in my car. And so I said, that's me. That's still going to be me (laughs) when I'm that age. Um, You know, and, and she didn't seem to care what was going on. It just seemed like she, I can relate to her still hitting the trail you know, at whatever age and still feeling connected to nature, wanting to have her trail look better than when she started, you know, walking or running on the trail. So, um, yeah, I just, I loved that. Uh, It just made me smile. It's kind of a little North star for me to. Right. No, I love that. It was so inspiring to you and hearing this story, it is inspiring, right? Yeah. 
And so on the blue zones, you know, the blue zones around the world where the people live to be over 100 and they're vibrant and their minds are clear and they're um, one of the things, the things that they found is that they are daily, they're active daily just Mm -hmm. as a way of life. There's not going to the gym. There's walking up and down hills and stairs and bending and lifting and moving. And it's just what you do. Yeah. And when you start to learn, you learn that when you're tiny and you do that, you know, walk in the woods and pick up trash or whatever. Yeah. That's what contributes. That's a huge contribution to living a rich, full, good, fat life. Absolutely. And I think we are always trying to find the thing, like, what is the thing? And now that everybody's doing this and now everybody's doing that and it's the thing. And I loved seeing her doing in her eighties, nineties, what I'm doing in my forties and thinking I found my thing, you know? So not everybody's going to walk all the time or hike or jog or whatever, uh, or bring a trash bag. I mean, I don't do that every time, but I enjoy it so much when I do. And not everybody gets it. That's okay. We all have our own way of, you know, communicating with nature and, and, you know, showing our appreciation for this beautiful place where we live um, and, and trying to keep it that way. But um, yeah, so I just, I think that's why it was so inspiring to me because I felt like, okay, she's no different in her eighties and nineties than I am in my forties. And we, there are things that they hold their value. So like I said, we think what's the newest sexy thing to do now. And, um, you know, once we find it, there really is no reason to keep on trying to figure it out. You can just, it just build on it. Felt just peaceful to yeah. see that. Yeah. 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 Comforting. Well, it was comforting to see it was inspiring. And also I found like it, like almost in my soul mm-hmm. it just was like oh, a peaceful. Yeah. Right? yeah. Um, the, what else was I going to say? Oh, and the, the other thing about um, it can be solved by walking is that I'm finding myself more deliberately taking those things where challenges that come up in the day and go, you know what, I'm just going to table that for my walk um, yeah. and just see what comes up. And and it's been like, oh, 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 you know, and, and there's something really magic about that. Yeah, I love that. And it's kind of one of the other aspects that I hit on in this article is it's kind of meditative. Yeah. You know, when you put that focus and intention on it, like you're saying, it can be a meditation and not that it takes the place of meditation, but we sometimes forget that meditation takes all forms. It can be a hundred different things. And sure, we're not sitting there and, you know, sitting there focusing and cross-legged or anything like that, but and we're, we're moving and our eyes are open so we don't trip. But those meditative connections come through when we just breathe. And that's the same thing as with meditation is focusing on the breath. And there's a rhythm and there's a beauty to just falling into a different level of awareness um, when you walk. When you walk. Yeah. Oh, so I, I can't wait to get out for my walk today. Mm-hmm. Which... <laughs> It's such a good cold, which is, yeah, it is. It's cold. But um, one of the, my asks at Kurt for Christmas was warm clothing to be out in any weather. My daughter gave me a vest that has a heater in it. It's got a battery. Oh yeah, I've seen those. I think I need one of those. Yeah. That's great. It it is, it is pretty nice and it's cracks me up. I kind of like, oh yeah, that's the old lady in me. And no, it's just, I like to be warm. Yeah. So, um, Well, good. So I'm just going to take a minute and do a shout out to our sponsor, who is a shout out to Sonata Course Cleaners. They are a huge part of my self-care. I put a bag of my items that need to be cleaned, um, cared for, stain removed, loved up, whatever, on my porch. And um, in a couple of days, or it could be same day, it it just depends on my needs. Uh, My stuff comes back. better than when it went out. And it just gives me so much comfort knowing that I don't have to worry about 
what I want to wear because I know what I want to wear. If I, when I decide what I want to wear, it's going to be there and it's sustainable and they do amazing things for the environment because everything they use is so environmentally, environmentally friendly. And there was a reminder about comforters. Um, I was reading an article about what happens to our comforters when we don't clean them. And I was just, I won't even go there, but I just will let you know that my comforters are all going out this week. <laughs> Um, to get cleaned there, to get cleaned and fresh. So thank you to Snet, of course, cleaners for be- being there and contributing to our overall self-care. So I want to remind our viewers to check out goodfatlife.com. You will see a new issue of the magazine. Uh, the digital issue will be up and the print copy is out and you can subscribe at goodfatlife.com. And as Laurel knows, we every month you get something. So even though the magazine is quarterly, on the months that you don't get the magazine, you get a wonder and surprises uh, and surprises. And it and it ties back into um, the articles and the messaging of uh, Good Fat Life. And, uh, so. That happy, that happy note. Thank you so much for being here and inspiring me and our listeners. And yeah, and for your contribution to Good Fat Life. Thank you. Yeah, I'm always happy to be here. So thank you for inviting me. And um, yeah, we have some really cool stuff coming up. The just watching this year, you talked about how we make our New Year's resolutions. I can't believe it's 2024. But when we look back, it's like, oh, we accomplished some things. There's a lot of momentum building. So I'm excited for this year for our good fat life. Good fat life. Okay, so on that happy note, go out and live your good fat life 2024.